Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, on today's show, we have to get ready for Tennessee Titans mandatory minicamp that starts on Tuesday. Today's show is going to be part one in a two-part series where I preview the entire roster position by position to get you guys ready to go. We're going to start with the offensive side of the ball. We're going to look at the backfield. Can Malik Willis win the backup quarterback spot? We're going to look at the skill positions. Are there some rookies and young guys who can make a leap with the veterans in town? And we'll look at the offensive line who will win those starting jobs. So a lot to discuss on the offensive side of the ball as we begin our Tennessee Titans mini camp preview here on the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Titans fans, it is a mini camp preview edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. I'm excited to go over the entire roster with you guys over the next two days. We're going to start with the offensive side of the ball today. Before we get into that, I do got to let you guys know that today's mini camp preview is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered the season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Also, got to thank you guys for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen. Every day, if this is your first ever listen to the Locked on Titans podcast, make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. I am going to be putting out daily Monday through Friday Tennessee Titans content all year long here on the Locked on Titans podcast, free and available on all platforms, including the Locked on Titans YouTube channel. Subscribe over there, smash that notification bell, and throw a thumbs up on the video if you're watching right now. But let's dive into the Tennessee Titans roster here before minicamp starts and watch. What's the difference here about the minicamp coming up this week compared to the OTAs the Titans have been doing for the last few weeks? Well, those were voluntary. This is a mandatory minicamp that will include all the rookies, all the young guys, and all the veterans. So the intensity, the competition, the amount of reps that these guys are getting are all going to ratchet up in terms of the veterans getting more reps and the young guys. That means they're going to get less reps, which means every single rep is even more important than before. So the intensity, the competition, all ratcheting up with a mandatory minicamp on the horizon. And let's go through this roster. We are going to start in the backfield. And at quarterback, it's simple. You got Ryan Tannehill, you got Logan Woodside, you got Malik Willis. And the most interesting thing to watch here is obviously, can Malik Willis win the backup quarterback job? That's going to be the number one interest point at quarterback by far. And I have to tell you, I think that when the season comes around, it'll be Logan Woodside that is the backup quarterback for the Titans. And if Tannehill were to go down for any length of time, I think that Logan Woodside would be the guy to go in there. And when the Titans play in preseason games, it's going to be Logan Woodside that goes in there and is the second fiddle. Now, I don't agree with it personally. Put Malik Willis out there in situations that won't affect wins and losses as much as possible. He should get every rep in practice over Logan Woodside. He should get every rep in the preseason over Logan Woodside. This guy is the future of the franchise at this moment in time. His development is a big part of whether the Titans can take the next step. So to me, to waste practice reps and waste preseason reps on Logan Woodside, even if Logan Woodside is better at the operation. Pat O'Hara, quarterback coach, talked about the operation of the offense last week and how that's the stuff they're working on with Malik. Getting in the huddle, calling the play, pre-snap reads, setting the formation, communicating assignments, all that stuff. Well, then give him more opportunities to practice those things and to work on those things and to see NFL defenses. Any rep that's given to Logan Woodside is an absolute detriment 
to the Tennessee Titans franchise and the future of the franchise. Logan Woodside's not good enough to do anything for the Titans if he had to play in the regular season. So it's not like you could squeeze more juice out of Logan Woodside, but giving him more opportunities, it makes no sense. But I fear, as my immediate reaction to Malik Willis is being drafted, I, I, Malik Willis being drafted, I fear that the Titans, through uh, a misplaced allegiance to operation and loyalty to guys who have been on the team for multiple years, are going to give too many reps and reps that could be really used for Malik Willis are going to give those to Logan Woodside. So that's what I'm going to be watching. That's the big question for me. At running back, you have Derrick Henry. You have Hassan Haskins. You have Dontrell Hilliard. You have Trenton Cannon. You have Jordan Wilkins. You have the undrafted free agent, Julius Chestnut. And then, of course, you have Torrey Carter at fullback. With Torrey Carter, no worries in my mind. No questions. He's the boss. He's the fullback for the Titans. Love what he put on film last year. Big Torrey Carter stand here. But looking at the other running backs, obviously Derrick Henry is entrenched. But I think you're seeing a battle here between Trenton Cannon and Dontrell Hilliard, who will be the complimentary third down back, who will be kick returning potentially as well. Who can really be that role for the Titans? For me, it's Dontrell Hilliard all day. Trenton Cannon could give you a little bit as a kick returner, but I don't think he's going to give you enough at running back to give you value. So to me, that's Dontrell Hilliard, hands down. But I am interested, slightly, a player that I'm watching is Julius Chestnut. He's been very impressive in OTAs, a big body guy, 6'1", 200 plus pounds, a bull, a downhill bruiser, which does go perfectly with what I think the Titans needed to get this offseason. They need to get that back up to Derrick Henry, the Deontay Foreman role, essentially. And Haskins and Chestnut could battle it out. Now, why I think Haskins is the superior player and he's going to be able to win that battle, you never know. You never know. And Julius Chestnut, like I said, undrafted free agent out of Sacred Heart, has been impressing. And as a big-bodied guy, who knows? Maybe he's a better pro than, uh, well, I mean, he was productive in college too. It's just the medical. So watching Julius Chestnut, seeing what he can do, he's going to get, he's going to be the Makai Sergeant of this year where he gets a ton of work in the preseason. So that's Julius Chestnut, Hassan Haskins, Trenton Cannon, Dontrell Hilliard. That's some battles to watch at running back for me, but really keeping my eye on Julius Chestnut and if he can take advantage of the opportunity. But we're going to move forward. We got to talk about the pass catchers. We got to talk wide receiver. We got to talk tight end. Remember, I'm going through every single player on the roster and talking about the most interesting guys to watch at each and every position. Before we get into those pass catchers, though, I do want to tell you guys a little bit about BlueNile.com. At BlueNile.com, you could celebrate all of life's special moments from creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams to gifting a classic and timeless jewelry piece all at prices that you won't find at a traditional jeweler. Whether you're ready to pop the question, eh? Or you're celebrating a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Build the engagement ring of her dreams or celebrate life's special moments with fine jewelry. No matter what you're looking for, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked on Titans listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement rings. Use code Locked On. That's promo code Locked On, one word. Plus, every order is insured. It ships for free, arrives in discreet packaging, so you won't give away what's inside. Shop stress free and find your forever peace. Use promo code Locked On at BlueNile.com today. Titans fans, we are going to continue part one of our Tennessee Titans mandatory mini camp preview. We talked about the backfield, running backs, and quarterbacks. Now we need to move into the pass catcher department. We're going to talk wide receivers and tight ends and what I am most interested in watching during this mandatory mini camp. Before we get into it, I do want to tell you guys the ultimate NBA mock draft starts June 16th uh, from the Locked On Podcast Network. 
the NBA team does a great job covering all the ins and outs of the NFL. They're going to have over 50 insiders. Nothing is going to equal the ultimate NBA mock draft, the Locked On NBA Big Board Draft Experts plus Odyssey's insiders. First pick is June 16th. Search Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and follow now so you don't miss the pick. Also, thank you guys for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. Diving back in here to our roster recap, our most interesting players to watch, our mini camp preview. Uh, Let's talk about wide receiver. So, of course, you have Robert Woods. You have Nick Westbrook Aquino. You have the rookie Traylon Burks. You have the rookie Kyle Phillips. You have Des Fitzpatrick. You have Racy McMahon. You have Mason Kinsey. You have Cody Hollister. You have Josh Malone. You have Reggie Roberson. You have Jawan Green. And you have Brandon Lewis. That's the wide receiver group going into uh, Titans mandatory minicamp and probably into training camp. So, obviously, Robert Woods, Nick Westbrook Aquino, Traylon Burks are locks to be on the roster. And quite honestly, I think Kyle Phillips, probably a lock to make the roster as well. So you have those four guys. And then after that, Titans will probably carry two more wide receivers to make it six. And we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys fighting for two spots. So of course you have the second year players, Des Fitzpatrick, Racy McMath, Mason Kinsey. They were with the Titans last year. Cody Hollister has seen some time with the team here and there. Cody Hollister obviously has a leg up. They just keep going back to the well, but ultimately he is a practice squad level guy. I don't think he's going to make the final 53-man roster. I really think that the most interesting player to watch here is Des Fitzpatrick. I have openly and publicly been a Des hater. There's no way around it. I'll call it what it is. Not only... Have I not liked what we've seen from Dez? He didn't make the roster last year. Caused two interceptions in the game against the Texans, doing the wrong thing for Ryan Tannehill. He was less than impressed last year. Let's just say that. But to keep it a buck, I hated the pick when it happened. The Titans traded up. They traded multiple picks. And they took Dez Fitzpatrick in front of Amon Ross St. Brown. In front of Brevin Jordan. Still, not only did they take Des Fitzpatrick over those guys, they traded up to do so. So, I still hated the decision, hated the trade, hated the pick. Went about how I expected. And I can't say that I'm very high on Des, but there's no denying he has a major opportunity here if he has made strides. Guys develop. Guys develop. And I can hate the pick and pat myself on the back for thinking I got Des right. All I want. But the reality is, there are guys who grow and get better and learn and evolve and change their careers around. And maybe Des Fitzpatrick can take advantage of the opportunity he has right now with the Titans, with the openness of the back part of the depth chart at wide receiver. And he can make that pick worth it. Maybe. I mean, he was pretty smooth route runner coming out of college. Not a great route runner, but kind of smooth. Good body adjustments. He had good hands in college. Was productive. Six foot one, so he's got good size too. I mean, it's there. Des Fitzpatrick has the package to be a a Tajay Sharp. You know, a wide receiver four, wide receiver five. I think he has the ability to do that. Will he take advantage of that opportunity here? If he doesn't do it this year with the opportunity he has, we can write off Des Fitzpatrick as any kind of impact on the Titans going forward in the future. It'd probably be his last year with the team if he can't find a way to make it on the actual 53-man roster this year. So that's how I feel about that. But other than him, another guy that I'm really looking at, this last group of guys, Josh Malone, Reggie Roberson, Jawan Green, Brandon Lewis. Jawan Green, Brandon Lewis. Those are camp invites. Good luck to those guys, but let's be honest here. Roberson, everybody's excited about him with his deep speed. That's something that the Titans clearly don't have. Any fan for the Titans can see they're missing a deep threat at wide receiver. So, he's got an opportunity, but we all talk about Roberson all the time because he's the undrafted free agent, but Josh Malone, Josh Malone, I think, and we've seen a lot of reports coming out of camp of Josh Malone impressing. He had a long touchdown pass that he caught the other day from Ryan Tannehill, which means to me that he's been getting reps with the first team as that outside deep threat. 
And I think, again, the same reasons I gave you for Des. There's no reason in my mind that a guy like Josh Malone can't beat out Racy McMath or Des Fitzpatrick or Mason Kinsey or Cody Hollister. Uh, Josh Malone has just as good of a chance as any of those guys, just because he wasn't picked up immediately after the draft as an undrafted free agent by the Titans. Doesn't mean that he doesn't have the same opportunity as those other guys we discussed. So Josh Malone and Des Fitzpatrick, I really think are battling it out for that end of the roster or end of the depth chart wide receiver spot. And both of those guys have the ability to get something similar to the Titans. A guy with decent size, about six foot one, with some speed to get down the field, can make some catches in contested situations. So that those two players right there, Dez and Malone, are people who I really think could do themselves a big favor by having a good mandatory minicamp. At tight end, you have Austin Hooper, you have Jeff Swaim, you have Chica Conquo, you have Tommy Hudson. Hopefully he's feeling better after a, a, what looked to be a hamstring injury in OTAs last week. You have Briley Moore, who's coming off a big uh, injury. And then you have Thomas Odukoye, Odukoya, Odukoya. Uh, Odukoya is from the Netherlands, so he's the Titans international program uh, spot. And everything that I've heard, everything that I've read, he's struggling a bit with the NFL. He had a couple of balls poked loose in one of the OTAs, back-to-back plays. He's just coming along a little slowly, so not too interested to, to watch that. But the guy that obviously is the most interesting to me is Tommy Hudson. Look, Hooper, Swaim, and Chig are going to be on this team. They are. But can Tommy Hudson, and with the Titans, philosophically there are whispers in the air that the Titans philosophically on offense are going to go back to multiple tight end sets after playing a lot of heavy three wide receiver last year. The Titans are getting back to those multiple tight end sets, two tight end sets, that they were known for in 2019 and 2020 with Art Smith. So, if the Titans are going back to that multiple tight end heavy system, they might want to carry four tight ends instead of just the three, Hooper, Swaim, and Chick. They might want to carry four, and if they do, if they do, I think that fourth tight end is clearly Tommy Hudson. Again, Odakoya, not making this team. Briley Moore, I think he gives you a lot of what Chig does. He's an athletic tight end, not a lot of size for a tight end, at least. I mean, normal people, yeah, he's a monster. But but I think Tommy Hudson can be that Jeff Swain backup and could do a little bit of what Austin Hooper is asked to do in the blocking game, at least. So I think Tommy Hudson, if the Titans keep four tight ends, makes the most sense. And he did have that hamstring injury just last week. Hopefully he can get back with all the veterans there and show that he's just as good as Jeff Swain, maybe even potentially a little bit better with the way we saw Swain play at times last year. So uh, Tommy Hudson, clearly the guy that I am watching at the tight end group, but we're going to move forward. It is time to go into the trenches, talk about the big boys up front on the offensive line. We're going to talk offensive tackle. We're going to talk interior offensive line, and by God, The Titans have a lot of people at offensive line as they try to figure out who they want to keep around to form this eight to nine man group. Before we get into that, though, I do want to tell you guys about BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship, uh, the NHL, hockey, conference finals, Major League Baseball's regular season, all the different fights with MMA, UFC, and boxing, horse racing, anything. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information. That includes live betting, esports, and more. Head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about all the trends and all the action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Titans fans, we are going to continue this mini camp preview edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. We're doing offense today. Tomorrow, we will be doing the defense and going position by position through the defense. Tuesday, the Titans mandatory mini camp begins. It'll go through the 14th through the 16th, and I'll be breaking down each practice that's open to the media for you guys on the show. So make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. Thank you for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen 
every day. As for your second listen, though, check out the Locked On NFL podcast. You get all your Titans news under 30 minutes here with me every day. Get all your NFL news in under 30 minutes every day with the Locked On NFL podcast, free and available on all platforms, including the Locked On NFL YouTube channel. I actually host the Thursday show of the Locked On NFL podcast, so if you guys would subscribe, I would appreciate that support directly. But moving forward here, we're going to talk about the offensive line. We talked about quarterback. We talked about running back, did wide receiver, did tight end. Time to get into the trenches. We're going to start with offensive tackles. So all the offensive tackles, and and listen, I could just do the entire offensive line. The Titans website has some guys like Andrew Ripsich, for example, has him listed as a tackle, has Carson Green listed as an offensive line. I mean, I just gave my opinion as to what I think these guys really have a chance to make the roster as. And of course, at offensive tackle, you have Taylor Lewan. You have Dylan Radins, which we know now, which is nice. You have Nicholas Petit Ferrer. You have Christian Deloro, who's returning to the Titans after being with the team last year. You have Carson Green. And then the player that I am watching. Yeah, of course, Dylan Raiden's starting at right tackle. But to me, it could only be Jamarco Jones. And they said Jamarco Jones is battling for the left guard starting position. So I really do think that Dylan Raiden's is playing right tackle this year. And I think they know it too. There is no competition. He's not battling it out with someone else. I think... I think Dylan Raiden's playing right tackle. They have to. They have to let the guy play. They do. One interesting note that I'll give you. Uh, I do not check out other Titans content. Uh, I read some articles from Titans Wire. My boy Mike, I write for Titans Wire, so I like to support their work. But other than that, I don't listen to other Titans podcasts. I don't read other Titans articles all the time unless it's, you know, something profound, really good work. Uh, no Flags Film does some uh, some good work on videos. Uh, Justin Milo does some really good work covering the team as well. Uh, Sean Calderon does some some good work. There's a ton of good Titans content creators out there. My guy, Will Lomas, of course. Um, but I try personally not to intake Titans content because I don't want to subconsciously take other people's ideas. It's a, a tactic that I learned from Colin Cowherd, uh, and I believe in it. I want to make everything fresh and original to me. Um, so with that being said, sometimes I do check out the OTP, the Titans podcast from the actual team because they intentionally or not give you some insight sometime. And there was a Dylan Raiden's interview on the OTP recently, and he talked about how hard it was for him to change his hips to play right tackle and right side after playing left side all of college. Something that we suspected, something that we talked about. Again, as I said last week, the Titans did the kid a disservice by trying to cross train him all over the offensive line. I, I, I and I'll, and I'll continue to say that. I'll continue to say that. So, anyways, moving forward. Obviously, we're watching Dylan Raidens, but Jalen McKenzie, the six foot five. 310 undrafted free agent out of USC, South California. Not South Carolina. Southern California, I guess, if you want to do the technical name, but whatever, it's semantics. You guys know what I'm saying. Jalen McKenzie was a highly recruited guy, and a lot of people thought that Jalen McKenzie was going to be a top pick in the NFL draft eventually. The guy has a ton of natural talent. He has great size at six foot five. If, if there was an undrafted free agent offensive lineman that I think could really break through and surprise everybody, it's Jalen McKenzie. The Titans have a need at offensive tackle for depth purposes. Okay, we all, I just said, Dylan Raidens is the right tackle. We want Dylan Raidens to be right tackle because we want to see what's going on there. But if he's not very good, and they do got to move him interior, then they're going to need a third tackle because Nicholas Petit Ferrer, Taylor Lewan, they're going to need that third tackle. It's a long shot. I get it. Undrafted free agents are always a long shot. But if there was one on the offensive line, Jalen McKenzie, I really think has the talent to play in the NFL. And I think it's a name that not a lot of people have talked about. Not a lot of content creators are discussing. Not a lot of fans are discussing. But look out for Jalen McKenzie at offensive tackle. On the interior, you have Nate Davis. You have Aaron Brewer, you have Jamarco Jones, you have Jordan Roos, you have Andrew Ripsich, you have Hayden uh, Howerton, you have Ben Jones, you have Corey Levin, you have Daniel Murner, you have Xavier Newman. That's the full 
roster of interior offensive line. Obviously, we know Nate Davis is the starter. Ben Jones is the starter. But for me, the obvious one to look at is Aaron Brewer versus Jamarco Jones. You guys knew that. That starting left guard competition. And per Keith Carter, the Titans offensive line coach, that is the competition. He said Aaron Brewer and Jamarco Jones are battling it out for left guard. And as I said last week, I want Jamarco Jones to win that battle. He's three inches taller. He's about 20 pounds heavier. And I think that that gives the Titans, I guess, more ability to block more defensive lines. There are certain people that Aaron Brewer, I think, could take on on the interior. But at six foot one, 275, Aaron Brewer just isn't big enough to be a starting offensive lineman in the NFL full time. I just don't believe it. And Jamarco Jones is focused at left tackle. So let him know that. Aaron Brewer has been with the team for multiple years. So he can play right guard. He can play center. He can play left guard. So he adds more utility. So I think Aaron Brewer adds more value to the Titans as the primary interior offensive line backup. And let Jamarco Jones, who's a big-bodied guy who matches up with more big-bodied defensive linemen, let Jamarco Jones be the starter at left guard. That's what I'm hoping for. But what about after we get past the starters? There's going to be a backup interior offensive lineman. We know it's going to be one of Aaron Brewer or Jamarco Jones, whoever doesn't win the battle. But would the Titans consider carrying another guy and having four offensive tackles and five interior guys. Or maybe the Titans carry eight, and they have three offensive tackles, Luan, Raidens, and PF, and then five interior guys, because Jamarco Jones can also play offensive tackle. So, if you have Jamarco Jones, who could play some tackle, that gives you four guys who can play tackle. Then you have uh, Ben Jones, Nate Davis, Aaron Brewer, well, that leaves you room for an eighth offensive lineman who can play on the interior. And the name to watch is Corey Levin. Former Titans draft pick, moved around a little bit, but came back home. I never want to see Daniel Murner play football for the Titans ever again. Just get him out of here. God, I'm done. I'm done with it. He is like, Daniel Murner is the Logan Wood side of the offensive line. I don't understand how he's still here. I don't get it. But I trust Corey Levin way more. And there are some whispers that Corey Levin is competing in that left guard starting battle. Now, I don't believe that. But to even hear those whispers, Corey Levin is a guy that can trust. Yeah, he's not a young guy. Yeah, he's probably never going to be starting level. But I trust Corey Levin to play backup. And if Aaron Brewer wins the starting left guard position and Ben Jones gets banged up, who's going to play center? Corey Levin would make sense as a guy who can do that. So, Corey Levin is who I'm watching as a veteran guy, especially veteran mandatory minicamps. He knows the offense. He knows the NFL better than some of these young guys. I think he has a chance to to really put a good showing out there and solidify his roster spot as the final offensive lineman on the Tennessee Titans in 2022. But there were some uh, comments here in the chat. Just want to hit those real quick. Honest win loss prediction, Richard Rhodes. Uh, 10 and 7 is my current prediction right now. Uh, hype for MW2. Uh, Vanguard sucks. <laughs> Don't worry, Raiden shut Nick Bosa down on his first career start. He won't be a bust. I'm with you. But again, as Dylan Raiden said, he felt he's much more comfortable on the left side and he's an offensive tackle. So when they put him in his prime spot, yeah, he had a good game. But what about when they move him around? Tim L says, why don't they sign another offensive lineman? Uh, I think they're comfortable with their group, but I wouldn't mind, let's say, you know, an Eric Flowers to compete at guard. But I I really do think the Titans feel comfortable with their group. Um, Yeah, but anyways, that's going to do it for me today, guys. I'm going to be back tomorrow to cover the defensive side of the ball and go position by position and player by player through there to find the most interesting guys to watch during mandatory minicamp. But the the last non-training camp, basically after mandatory minicamp, it gets real at the end of July when training camp starts. So this is kind of a our last true off-season feeling activity for the Titans. But breaking down the defense tomorrow, that's going to do it for me today, folks. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans.